Welcome to another video from the Voyager uh, Middle School Steam Lab. Uh, this video is going to show you how to add these indents that are going to dent my cookie but not cut all the way through. If you zoom in here you can see that the face doesn't go all the way to the level of the cookie cutter. Um, this has been imported in uh, from a file that we made in Inkscape from a DXF file and we've already extruded out the part that actually cuts the cookie. The, those two videos you can uh, watch uh, how to trace and then how to import and extrude um, in my feed. Uh, I'll link to those in the description too. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch here to one that has already been done. Here's one that's already done. You can see that I have a unicorn. So the unicorn has had two extrusions. This one is the handle. This one is the cutter. But you can see the model still right here. And the model contains more data. You can tell when I hover over it. When I click on it, it's going to select that mo that part. I'm going to extrude. It's important to know how how much you've extruded the uh, the cutter part. You can see it, I just did it, so it remembers that it was 35. So I'm going to extrude the next one, not quite 35. I'm going to subtract away at least half of the thickness of the cookie dough that I think that I'm going to roll out. So if I roll out a cookie dough and it's four millimeters, I'm probably going to want to set this at not 31 because then it wouldn't touch, but like 30. Two or 33. So then I'm going to select all the regions that I want to dent. So if they're all one region, that's really easy. Under selected contours, you're going to click on those areas. You're going to make sure that you're going the right amount. Um, and you can go through and you can find all of the different pieces that you want to select. And what I'm going to find when I do this is that when I get to this part right here, it breaks everything. My preview went away which is an indication that there's a problem. So I'm going to stop what I'm doing, and I'm going to look at this sketch right here. There's something going on here. And if I zoom in, I can kind of see what's going to happen here. You can see that the, these two splines are overlapping each other here, and that's where my problem is. So I can try moving that point. Um, you can see that now you can see it's a little bit more obvious, the overlap. If I start to zoom in, sometimes SolidWorks has a hard time with this, but you can see what's going on here. And then sometimes I can just trim this. So by drawing across there, it trims it down to the point where they intersected. Um, sometimes that doesn't work very well, uh, but I think that's going to work for me in this case. So let's give that a try now. So now I'm going to close my sketch, and SolidWorks will rebuild my file. Then I'm going to try again. Select, extrude. Let's start with this part first. And it's working. So now I can go through and I can choose each part. So I might not take the time in this video to select every single part. And you can also edit at this point and say, well, actually, maybe I don't want every single part of this. Um, but each part of this that I choose to extrude right now will dent on the cookie. So it'll leave a little impression. So that's how you can make really fancy looking things. Of course, depending on the dough you're using. Oops. See, that last one was not the right one. So I'm going to select it right here and press delete. Did I get it? No, well, maybe it's this one. Oh, now I broke the whole thing. So maybe it's this last one. Let's get rid of that last one. There we go. All right. So you might want to select, be, care be careful, and make sure that you are only choosing the ones you want. And if you get to a point where you decide that actually that part that you had in the file is not something you want, like maybe all these little eyelashes, I decide that I don't want them. I don't have to choose them. Right now I'm choosing what's going to extrude. So as you're doing this, you want to keep in mind that each one of these things is going to be 3D printed. And as these things are 3D printed, you've got to think about, okay, so now that all of those different pieces are going to be 3D printed, I've got all these different pieces now. And if I print this out, it's going to all come off separate. Every single one of these little things is going to be separate. So what am I going to do to make it so that when I 3D print this, this is one cookie cutter and not a whole bunch of things? Well, I could just extrude the whole thing on the back, but then I can't poke the cookie out. So I'm going to need to add some, some straps across here to attach these things to the main cookie cutter. So what I'll do for that is I'll find the plane that everything is sitting on here. I might have to zoom out here a little bit. So this is all on the front plane. Uh, that's where I put it when I first uh, installed it. So I'm going to select the front plane, go to sketch, and I could either use the line tool or I could use rectangles. 
Um, and with my rectangles, what I'm going to want to do is start in my cookie cutter. You can see that I'm having a hard time with the rectangle because it's not aligned. I'm going to use the straight line tool then, and I'm going to start in my cookie cutter, go across, and add a thickness like this. So the, everything that's touching this part, if I extrude this, will, will can be attached to that. So there's some parts up here that won't be attached in that case. So I want to add them too. So, and you can, doesn't have to be a rectangle. It could be a different shape. I want to make sure that I'm inside my handle here so I can hide it. Um, these parts here are not attached. So I can also do things like this. Or I can attach to something that was already there, and I can trim that line to make it all one piece. And I'm just making sure that everything has got at least one point of attachment. Um, more if I'm worried about strength. I might want to add some attachment on the edges, especially if there's not a lot of space in here to put a finger through here to push it out anyway. So I can always just add a little bit more on this side. I'll add a little bit more over here so that these long pieces have a point of attachment on either side to give a little bit extra support. Okay, so now I have these shapes. I'm going to close that with a check mark. I've got this new sketch here. I'm going to close the sketch. You can see what I've done here. So how am I going to merge this? Well, I have found that if I just try and extrude this the same height as the handle, I have a tendency to break things, and SolidWorks has a tendency to have a problem. So make sure you're saving your work frequently. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this sketch. I'm going to choose Extrude. And instead of going all the way up this height, I only want to go the height of the handle or so. So I'm just going to go very thin in the background. And instead of choosing Merge Result right away, I'm going to uncheck that. And the reason I'm going to uncheck that is, I, well, last time I tried it, everything disappeared. It was still there, but it wasn't showing correctly on SolidWorks. So I'm going to just uncheck that, and we'll go slow. So now I've got several different extrusions. Some of them are merged, some of them are not. So how am I going to merge them all together? What I have found it works a little bit better is to go to Analysis Preparation, and I even just drew a box around the whole thing and chose Combine. Oops. Draw a box around the whole thing and choose Combine. All the little pieces will be here. Add is the type of Combine I want. Check mark. And then you just kind of wait, and it'll figure it out. Um, I got some rebuild errors there. I have to do a little bit of investigating. On my other model, it worked out just fine. So if you're having trouble with rebuild errors, you're going to have to kind of track down um, where those problems are and maybe go back and try again. Um, yeah, so it can give you a sense of what the problems are. You can also do one at a time. Um, by, by instead of doing trying to do all of this at once, you could do just a little bit at a time, and that might be more effective. So we're kind of pushing SolidWorks to the limits here. You might want to try, when you're, when you're putting your DXF file together, you might want to try to have less nodes. It makes things a little bit simpler so that you don't have quite so much to combine. Um, you can also try doing a little bit at a time, like all these little eyelashes, this part and this part. And then if I hit check mark here, see that worked out just fine. So that was probably not the problem. The other thing I'm probably having an issue with here is I don't think I extruded these the same height as the handle. I think this little bump sticking out here is never that great cosmetically or for when you're trying to add things together. So just be aware of what you're trying to put, what you're, what sort of math you're trying to put SolidWorks through and try and limit that math as much as you can. Do a little bit at a time. If you have a bunch of combines here, it might be a little bit ugly, but it'll still 3D print just fine. All right. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please watch my other video about how to make the DXF file, how to extrude the cookie cutter. All of that is in the other videos. Um, I hope you're enjoying making things on the 3D printer in SolidWorks and using Inkscape for our 2D work.